Well, I was a building inspector. Um, and just a quick summary of my background, uh, a lot's changed and I don't consider myself an expert anymore, but <clears throat> I was um, employed by two counties, Los Angeles County and Nevada County. I worked as a real estate appraiser, deputy tax assessor, deputy building inspector. I was on the fire code board, the building code board, the building code board of appeals. I was a planning commissioner. I helped write two general plans. I have a, I had a general contractor's license. I had an advanced appraisal certificate from the state of California. Um, and I did uh, expert, te expert testimony in Superior Court. Um, also held a uh, real estate broker's license. So I've inspected a lot of houses with um, an UFER ground. That was the common ground. Today it's a little bit different. Uh, the National Life Code, as I read it, is going to want two uh, ground rods. It could be an UFER ground and a ground rod or it could be two ground rods that are uh, at least six feet apart. Here's the point that I'm getting to, and it took me a long time to get to this point. Should you drive a rod, a ground rod, and run, usually the video recommends, or even a lot of the publications, a number six wire from your station, we'll talk about where that would connect, to that ground rod. And my answer is no, because it is probably too far from the main panel. The electric code wants everything back at that common point ground. If you drive a ground rod outside, you provided a different path to ground and the electric code doesn't want that. If that driven rod is relatively close to the panel and you go from that rod with a conductor to a driven rod, and that one's connected to the main electrical panel or in a relatively short distance, say six, eight, 10 feet, connected to the main panel, that would be fine. But if it's on the opposite side of the house and you drive a ground rod, technically you're in violation of, as I read it, the National Electric Code. Um, in some jurisdictions, they've adopted more strict regulations than the NEC. Um, some are real extreme. Even here in California, there are some jurisdictions where um, uh, even the connections to outlets are uh, tightly regulated and in many cases it's a good thing. For example, in some jurisdictions you can't take an electrical out outlet and poke in um, the number 14 wire on a 15 amp service they want it to go to the screw. So this is the typical plug that you would see um, maybe on your computer or the power supply for your ham radio equipment. Sometimes these are called stabs, whatever you call it. Um, we'll call them prongs if you want. This prong is the ground. It's the longer of the three. Uh, the one on the left is the neutral. It um, can be vertical for a 15 amp outlet, can be horizontal for a 20 amp outlet at 120 volts. Uh, the one on the right is uh, the hot. And that one's usually the smaller, is usually smaller than the neutral one. So you've got a hot, a neutral, and a ground. Ground is the green wire, the hot is the white wire, and uh, sorry, the neutral is a white wire, and the hot is the black wire. And if you plug into an outlet, those three wires um, wouldn't necessarily be green. Probably doesn't have any uh, coating on it at all goes back to the main panel from your uh, receptacle. The reason for the two, uh, the two lines back to the main panel is it's a redundancy in the ground system. So that grounding system, um, again, if there's a failure, they want to make sure the equipment is grounded. Real quick, in building my station here, I went to the extreme um, to test what I really already knew because I had I had been on the air for 56 years, and in my prior station, I had no connection to a ground rod uh, other than the electrical ground. So for safety purposes, and as a test, 
Uh, the room is lined with foil, aluminum foil on three walls. The on the three walls is two strips of this copper. And this copper then runs around the room, uh, one on top of the other. So I have about six inches of this stuff comes out of the wall and connects to a copper pipe that's underneath the desk, a three quarter inch copper pipe. Okay, here's the underside of my desk. Um, and there's the copper pipe that runs under the desk to the three legs. It's an L-shaped desk. And that copper pipe is in turn connected to uh, grounding straps. There's, uh, there's one there that lead to a one inch copper pipe. Then each piece of equipment, uh, there's one that's I've not yet connected or hook up to that kind of a braid thing. And the braid is attached mechanically to the pipe with a clamp. So I put everything on that pipe that I could. This is an AB switch to uh, choose between um, uh, two transceivers. There's a uh, strip with 12 volts on it and I've got a uh, meter to read the 12 volts. The um, AC terminal strip it has got a switch on it. Uh, that box is, I know it's hard to see, but that's the um, one of the relay boxes so I can uh, select various antennas and that heads outside. That cluster is uh, watt meters and other devices to sense RF before it does go outside. And again it's connected to the uh, the frame of the desk using that copper pipe. It's pretty messy wiring but um, that's um, that's the best I could do, I guess. So everything is connected to that copper pipe, and that in turn connects to the copper strips that lead to the copper pipe that goes to the main electrical panel. So each piece of equipment has this connected to the back of it, goes to that pipe. I'm tr what I'm trying to accomplish is keeping each box at the same potential. Could be a half an ohm or half a volt rather above ground could be one volt above ground but each box is going to be at the same potential so that I don't end up inadvertently getting shocked. Uh, we'll continue this discussion in the next video and we'll talk about RF grounding and in particular um, when questions come up about RF and the audio uh, what causes that and the answer is pretty simple. Oh, before I forget, in one of the videos um, from an expert, uh, he recommends that, back to this plug, that to stop ground loops, ground loops, you cut off this pin so that you don't have that ground connection. Um, that would be a violation of the building code and it isn't safe. So no matter what that guy says, don't do that. Uh, keep everything grounded. Uh, safety. All right. This should generate some questions and probably some emails. Go for it. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you have a question, post that below. If you like this, this video, uh, give it a thumbs up. Um, if you do do a thumbs down, uh, give me an explanation. Uh, tell me what, uh, what you'd like to see done differently. In any case, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I'm Jim W6LG from Rockland, California. 73 and stay safe.